Marcus Burnett, Jared Johnson. Coach is getting ready to coach the uh, the East All-Star squad, I believe. That's right. Uh, coach, as commissioner of the league, talk about this event and how it fits into your outlook for the league as a whole. Well, uh, the WBA All-Star game is an annual event, and it's been growing just as the league has been growing each year. Uh, this year, we have a lot of uh, what we call high-level players, and uh, the level has increased. We have players who played in the WNBA. We have players who have been... NCAA award-winning players and uh, players with overseas uh, all-star experience as well. So um, we're really excited about this year being at another level of, of anticipation, of excitement, and, and great basketball. Now you've coached and been involved in different levels. Obviously the players, their resumes speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Talk about how this event plays a role, even though a lot of these players have played on some pretty impressive stages throughout their careers. Well, this, this is a, what we call a proving ground. Uh, minor league basketball in the USA is about trying to prepare people for the next level. And at this level, uh, when you have competition where you've got girls who are trying to get jobs, competing against girls who have contracts, this is a good proving ground. Yeah. So uh, when they look good against the real deal, we know we're the real deal. Yeah. And it's always a balance when you look at an all-star game. You want to enjoy your accomplishments and have fun, but right. then, like you said, there's that proving ground element to where right. there has to be some fundamentals there. What right. are your thoughts on that balance going into this game and both teams being able to kind of walk that line? Uh, well, looking at the rosters and looking at the resumes of the players, uh, I think that we're going to see a really exciting game. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a good mix of girls who have been there, done that, along with those who are up and coming, you know, gunslingers who want to prove themselves. Yep. So uh, we should see some battling going on as well as, you know, some entertaining basketball. Hey, well, we won't hold you or the audience any yeah. longer, Coach. Good luck to you. Okay. Appreciate you joining us here okay. at Portside. Thank you. Welcome here to the Walter and Andrew Young YMCA here in Atlanta, Georgia, as we get ready to bring you WUBA All-Star Game action. I'm Marcus Burnett here on the microphone. We appreciate you joining us. We've got the Dominique Wilkins gym here on hand for what Coach Jared Johnson described pregame as a proving ground for the players involved. Make no mistake, it is an honor to be in this game but you've got players that have played on various levels and in various countries. So I look for a very competitive atmosphere here. East with the ball in the first possession. We'll have it. Ball's lost temporarily. Now they'll kick it out up top. Ball out of bounds and it will go back over to the west. Got a baseline drive and it's going to result in a foul. 
number 22, Brianna Brock. Brock gets our first trip to the free throw line. As well as an opportunity to get us our first points of the game here. Off the mark there on that first free throw. Brock, a member of the Tennessee Dragons uh, here in the UBA. Misses that free throw. That three-point attempt off the mark there. Now Brock with the steal. Here's Bowens. Trying to work it inside, a little bit of high-low action. It's gonna be stolen away. They throw it the other way quickly. Layup drill on the other end there for number 23. Courtney Hurt. Hurt makes it a two to nothing ball game. The jumpers have not fallen so far, but change that, changing that as we speak, I should say, is Tanya Bowens making it two to two. Her mid-range jumper gives us an early tie. Three-pointer off the mark there by Hurt. Rebound by Brock. Good level of activity for her so far in this one. Has a steal, couple rebounds. Trip to the free throw line, even though she wasn't able to knock the free throws down. Coach J.B. Barnes has to appreciate the activity level uh, so far here early on. Two to two is your score, West Habit. Again, trying to go inside, little bit too much mustard on the pass. Taylor Ford unable to hold on, so it'll go back over to the east. They swing it to the top of the key. Now they'll get it out. That's a wide open look in and out there. Brock with another rebound. Gets it in the hands of Bowens. Bowens tries to go behind the back. Goes off the hill, but she's able to pick up the pieces. Get it to Brock. Still trying to go inside. This is their first time getting it in successfully. Good shot on goal. Even though it won't fall there for number one, Brittany Logan. Another rebound for Lagashi. Chases down that long one. Now they working inside again. Shot fake. And nice finish with the left. That's number 32. Nice work there on the inside. That's a Sharita Trigg. Sorry about that. Trigg with a nice bucket. Nice move, straight to the cup. Lit on the rim there, couldn't do anything differently than how Bond did it there. Broke the defender, off the dribble. Nice layup, just wouldn't stay down for. Pass up ahead, and another layup missed there by Bond. She's getting some good looks, won't fall just yet, but. With the pep she's shown in her step to get to the rack, that won't be her last opportunity there. Getting that one to bounce around and go down there, believe that was Ford. That'll make it six to two in favor of the West. Jumper along the baseline misses. Here's Hurt bringing it across. Goes inside, all oh, by her lonesome. Missing on the first one, working hard. Third time is a charm. Uh, there for number eight, Christina DeWitt. The former North Carolina Tar Heel makes it six to four there with that bucket. Brock gonna try her luck at a three pointer. That one's way off. Come to East. They've gotten the shots they've wanted over the past few possessions. Here we got an and one. Courtney Hurt gets the hoop and the harm. Hurt makes it six to six.
Now seven to six. After they score that bucket. Leading the pack there again is Bond. Bond can't get the layup to go. That jumper is knocked down from the corner. It's Sharada Triggs with another one to make it eight to seven. Offensive rebound and the finish off the window. That's good for number one. Armelli Lumanu. Lumanu makes it nine to eight. There's Bowens from the corner. No good on that shot. Rebound in the cut by Brock. SWAT team called there. That one's knocked against the glass by Christina DeWitt. Pass faked. Shot up. No good. DeWitt can't get the follow. And is going to be kicked out top. Hurt kicks it to the corner. Not settling for the three-pointer. Taking it to the rack. I'll tell you what. That rim won't say it has voodoo on it. Won't say it has a lid on it. But there is something going wrong with the dynamic of that rim over there because they've had a, at least three to four layups where it looked like they put just the right amount of touch off the window, but the shots would not fall for the East squad. Call it what you want. I'm sure if they can get those looks all game, they'll take them. It's just a matter of starting to hit them. Meanwhile, the West continues to work that pill on the inside, and Michaela Hopkins gets the bucket. She makes it 10 to nine. Working it inside has been something that the West have done uh, consistently so far here in this game. First couple times, they couldn't get it in successfully, even though the attempts were made. The past few times, they've been able to get it in and take advantage. Here, they're just playing volleyball around the rim, multiple offensive rebounds. And finally, the bucket is scored there by number eight, as he knocks. Knox makes it a 12-9 game in favor of the West. That pass a little bit too tall there. It was intended for Armelli Lumanu. Goes out of bounds. And So it's Bowens with it. Bowens kicks it to the wing. Again, they're looking to go inside. Here's Hopkins. Hopkins faces up, can't get the jump shot to go. They'll get another offensive rebound. Bowens is calling for it. Gives it to Hopkins. Hopkins misses that one. They've got hurt ahead. We'll see if they get it to her in time. Yes, they do. Layup drill on the other end makes it 11 to 12. Study long, study wrong. Three pointer off the mark there for number 24, Shan Hardenman. Pass intended. On the inside for number 12, Shamir Jordan. Got a little bit tied up there on the reception. Checking into the game for the E squad. It'll be number six, Felicia Drummond. There's Taylor Ford with it for the West. Kicks it to the top of the key. Now they're trying to work it inside to Hopkins. Hopkins hasn't been shy on the inside. Turns around there, no good. Offensive rebound in there by, as he knocks. She can't get the shot to go. Hurt's gonna come away with it and we're going to have a foul on the plate. Nice, nice offensive rebound there by as he knocks. Probably would have had better luck there on the, the put back side of things without taking that dribble. That dribble had the uh, West defense there, or the East defense there waiting on it. That jumper's off the mark. Rebound comes to Taylor Ford. Ford stops at the elbow. No good on the shot. Hurt gets the rebound and clears it. Jordan, cross-court pass to the corner. 
Shots off the mark. Rebound brought down by Hardiman. Here's as he knocks. Knocks, using the screen set by Hopkins. Turning the corner and getting it to go off the window. As he knocks. Knocking on the window and getting the deuce there. She makes it 11 to 14. Here's a three from the top of the key by Hurt. Ball tapped out. Another opportunity for the East. Deep three-pointer. That one's no good. The West with the rebound. Here's four. Knox gets the step. That one, nice defense by Bond. Looked like she got a piece of that last one. The reverse, no good for Knox. Ball's on the deck. And we have a foul there on the scrum to get to it. Ball will go back over to the West. They're trying to get it inside. Inside, outside game. Three-pointer won't go, but not a bad shot at all. That was a good look there for number 12, Jordan. Good use of the shot fake by Knox and splashing it there along the baseline. That is a good first stint there for Azzy Knox. You can see Coach Barnes liking the way his team ended. That first one. Here you can see Ford. VR Red Bull instant replay. Knox, nice subtle shot fake. Steps in. Who says the mid-range is a lost start? As he knocks would uh, beg to disagree there. We'll take a short break and be back here at the WUBA All-Star Game. bring a lifetime of memories. Join our family with a Dream Elite membership. Call or log on today. Your Atlanta dream. Live it. And welcome back to the action. 11 to 16 is your score in favor of the West All-Stars. It's actually second quarter action. Three-pointer on the way for the East. It's no good. Brianna Brock with another rebound. Now she gets it to Bowens. Bowens finds Brock inside. Brock with the reverse. Nice play there. That's how you start something and then come back and finish it. It was Brock with the rebound initially, then able to run the floor, and Bowens found her. Bowens to Knox. Knox. Can't get that shot to go. Bowen's going to have a wide open look at three. Long rebound, and it will go back to the east. Eleven to eighteen is your score. East with it. Nice move on the inside there. That's number five, Kendra Appling. Appling able to get that shot to fall. And a lot of the, the freebies or the gimmies on the inside, unfortunately, have not fallen for the East team so far in this one. Foul there on that shot attempt. We'll send Sharita Triggs to the line. Triggs, a member of the GIE Lady Matrix. 
Played four years in Europe. A WUBA first team member. Off the mark there on that free throw. It's a 13 18 ball game here in the second quarter. Triggs good on that free throw, 13 and 19. Pulling up on the jumper, it's off the mark. DeWitt able to keep it in bounds, now towing along the baseline. That shot up, no good. Going to be pulled out of there by Team West. Bowen will bring it across to see her directing traffic. West trying to work it inside, something they've done all game. This time, that pass attempt is going to be stolen. And again, another layup that just won't stay down for the West. Brock with yet another rebound. Skip pass over to Knox, who knocks it down. Good game here from Azzy Knox so far. She makes it 13 to 22. Ball out of bounds, and back over to the west. It'll be Knox to inbound it. Her and Bowen have really been spark plugs so far here in this game. Bowen really with helping push the pace, set the tempo, run the offense. Knox just on the wing, being able to take what the defense has given her. Whether it's been faking the three, stepping in for the mid-range, or being able to move without the ball and being found by a bone. That three-pointer is knocked down there to make it 16 to 22. It's number 21, Alicia Harson with that one. She makes it a six-point game here with six minutes, 38 seconds and counting. Left to play here in the second quarter. Owens hasn't gotten a breather yet. That shot's off the mark. Triggs with the offensive rebound. Bowen stepping in and stealing it right back. Triggs gonna get a two for a dollar opportunity there on the shots, thanks to the hard work of Tanya Bowens. They make it 16 to 24 there on that jump shot. Brock, she's just been eating glass this entire game. Bowens passes it ahead. That's an easy layup on the other end for Azzy Knox. Knox is already in double digits. Three mainstays for this West attack this game have been Brianna Brock, number 22 there, rebounding. The mess out of the ball. Tanya Bowen's pushing it, and you see her doing so there. Now setting up Triggs, seals the defender off. Easy pass on the inside and the finish. That's good basketball being played there by the West. Good, simple basketball. Bowen's pushing it instead of running in and trying to force something. She gave Triggs enough time to set up on the inside. And they came away with the bucket as a result. Triggs gets the rebound, gets it in the hands of Bowen's. Bowen's passes to Brock. And Brock is fouled on that play. She will go to the free throw line. But we take a look at that last play VR Red Bull instant replay. You can see Bowens stop it just right there. Trigg seals off the defender, who, relatively speaking, is a mouse in the house when you put her up against Triggs on the inside. And the West able to get another easy bucket. Score now 16 to 28. See Bowens there on your screen, number 12. She's been the straw that's been stirring the drink, so to speak, here for the West All-Stars. DeWitt got the rebound, gets it ahead. Now DeWitt gonna try a jumper, can't get it to go, but it will stay with the East.
East inbound it to DeWitt. DeWitt takes that jumper too strong on the shot. Rebound's going to be chased down there by number 24, Shan Hardman. Inbounded it, nowhere to go along the baseline. She says, that's what you thought. I've got plenty of room. That's number 13, Carrie Washington, tight roping the baseline and getting the bucket. Makes it 16 to 30. Now we've got a steal. That's Taylor Ford with it, pushing it the other way, drops it off, right back to her. Baby jumper, no good. The inbounded Hopkins can't get that shot to go, but they'll get another crack at it. Hopkins won't miss that one. She makes it 16 to 32. 16 point advantage now for the West All Stars, and they just continue to pile it on. Everybody's getting a touch. They're moving the ball around, rebounding, getting off to the races. Case in point, they tip the rebound out to Bowen. Now they kick it out to the corner. Ford, in and out. Hopkins fighting for the offensive rebound, can't get it. Now they'll pass it all the way ahead, getting her best free safety impression on there is Taylor Ford as she knocks that one out of bounds. Three minutes, 32 seconds left here in the game. First half, that is, just the second quarter. Jump shots off the mark. Momentum squ squarely on the side of the West All-Star so far. Here's Ford. Kicks it out to Hardman. Hardman going to try the three. Too strong. Uh, the offensive rebound and their ability to do it well. That dynamic continues for the West All-Stars. Kerry Washington is fouled and will go to the line. Free throw, no good. Unable to get that free throw, but while you want to knock down your free throws, the West All-Stars missed their first two free throws. It was Brianna Brock. But since then, she's, got, she's gotten almost 12, 15 rebounds by herself. Uh, and they really have had all sister cylinders rolling uh, up to this point. Trying to turn the corner, but being denied there. Nice defense by Washington. Now they kick it over. Baseline drive, they get it to DeWitt. DeWitt shot won't go. All you see is the pink jerseys flying all over the place for the West. Here's Ford. Ford to Knox. Knox fouled on the play. Been a very productive game here on the offensive end for Azzy Knox. Knox good on the free throw. Two minutes, 41 seconds remaining here in the first half. It's the second one to go. For now 16 to 33. West in the driver's seat. He's trying to change that status. Just beyond the free throw line, nothing but net there on that jumper. Number 23, Courtney Hurt. A 
Nice defense there by the East and a layup drill on the other end there for Armalee Luminu. Ford trying to come right back. No, ma'am, says number 10, Latoya Bond. If she gets that block, Hopkins can't get her shot to go. East trying to get a little momentum, going behind the back, having to kick it out to Bond. Bond going to try the jumper. No good, long rebound. Going to be brought in, that's Hardiman. Hardiman's done a good job rebounding the ball also. Taylor Ford up top. Ford off the mark. Another offensive rebound on the inside by Kerry Washington. One minute, 22 seconds left here in the first half. Washington off the mark on that free throw. Free throw line not being too kind to carry Washington so far here in this game. Here's DeWitt, strong move, finishes off the glass. DeWitt makes it 22 to 34. Gonna be an illegal screen against Washington. So it's a 12 point game with the East Letting their play make a statement that this game is far from over. It's just 12 points. The deficit faced here with a minute remaining in the first half. DeWitt can't get that shot to go. Ball is on the floor, and we're going to have a timeout. We'll take that timeout with them. Appreciate you joining us here for the WUBA All-Star Game. You see Bowen's there. Uh, she'll get it to Brianna Brock. It was Brock that started it with that rebound. There you see her finishing with the reverse. We'll be back after this commercial break. Call or log on today. Your Atlanta dream. Live it. Time out here on the floor at the WUBA uh, All-Star Game. Believe it's an injury timeout. It is a 12-point game. Uh, the West squad was off to the races early on. But the East was able to weather the initial storm, and now they find themselves within 12 points. So you've got 52.1 seconds left to play here in the first half. Look at some of the factors that led to the West All-Stars jumping ahead early on. Some of you can attribute to the play of number 12, Tanya Bowens, uh, the point guard. Great job kind of creating tempo for them getting everybody involved early on. Brianna Brock, number 22 for the West All-Stars, was just great rebounding the ball. It really minimized the number of offensive rebounds that the East team was able to get and capitalized on the other end with plays, players such as Azzy Knox, 
number eight, who's been able to score a couple times at the rack. He's knocked down a few jumpers, and it's just been very solid uh, overall. On top of that, the East had at least five or six shots on goal uh, there in that first quarter that were good looking shots, uh, were ones that I'm sure uh, Coach wouldn't mind them taking at all, but they just wouldn't fall down for them. Sometimes there's nothing you can do when something like that happens except get back on defense and wait for the, uh, the bad luck in terms of the rim to kind of pass over. Looks like we've reached that point for the East, and they've come storming back to make it a 12-point game. Momentum on their side, but will it be enough to erase what is a relatively sizable deficit here? But 12 points is not a bad gap especially considering where it was at. Getting inside to Bowens. Bowens to Washington, now they're trying to work it inside. Bowens has that one tipped. Hopkins along the baseline. Nice work there. Makes it 22 to 36. The witch, she's been more aggressive. One more aggressive as this game is going on. Can't get that shot to go. They get it to DeWitt again. Her level of activity has been a direct correlation with how well they do. She gets that one to go, makes it 24 to 36 at the half. We'll be back after this halftime intermission. game. I'm here with Azzy Knox, a pivotal player there in the first half. Azzy, you were really able to come out and kind of help be a catalyst for your team on both ends. Uh, was that what you planned on coming out, or, 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 or did you just want to come out and help your team in any way can, you could? Um, I just like to play and help my team any way I can. Um, start off a little rocky, but once I got the feel for the game, it all came after. Now, with early on, they really weren't able to get a lot of their shots to fall. How much of that run do you think initially was the job you guys did on rebounding as well as you being able to score the ball versus their shots just not falling early on? Uh, we have some great defensive players um, that can get the boards very well, too. So we were able to contain and um, finish with boxing out and get the rebound. So that helped out a lot. Now, I noticed you did a lot of your work moving without the ball, just being able to run the court and do your thing from there. Talk about Tanya Bowens and how you felt like her role kind of helped you be able to score there in the first half. Um, they were, she was drawing a lot of attention, so it just I just started moving off the ball. Um, they were staring at the ball, and I realized when you move off the ball, it makes it easier on your teammates and yourself. So, so far, so good there in the first half. Obviously, the, the gap was kind of cut down a little bit. What do you think you guys can do differently to make sure that lead either stretches out versus letting them close it? Um, Continue to play great defense. Um, some plays we kind of let up and just let them kind of like, you know, get sec uh, second chance rebound. Mm -hmm. um, but if we, we control the boards and play good defense, um, we'll stretch it out again. As he knocks, true to her last name, knocking shots down there in the first half. We'll be back after halftime here at the WUBA All-Star Game. Ready for third quarter action here at the WUBA All-Star Game. It is a 24 to 36 score. 
West with the advantage, but the East making a very good run to cut the gap to 12 going into halftime. Here putting on the burners and scoring through the contact there is LaToya Bond. So Bond able to get them off to a relatively good start here. As you can see her go behind the back using that screen, turns the corner, eats that contact and finishes. So a nice play there by Bond and you know, spoke with Azzy Knox of the West All-Stars there at halftime about their ability to hit shots and rebound the ball, but Latoya Bond really got on the inside early against the West, but couldn't get some of her shots to fall. She's already off to a better start here in the second half. Uh, there with that three-point play that she got to open up the second installment. She makes it a nine-point game, so single-digit deficit. Here with plenty of game left. First free throw off the mark. Second one stays down after bouncing around for a little bit. That'll make it 28 to 36. Here's Bowens. Did a nice job of slowing up, acting like she was just waiting to, to see where that screen went or where the direction of that screen went, then kicked it into a higher gear to turn the corner quickly and get the trip to the line. And savvy plays like that from Bowens uh, this entire game. As he knocks touch on it at halftime, the attention she's been able to draw is because she's knocked down a couple three-pointers. Has been able to work it inside. As well as having the recognition when to penetrate and be able to draw attention that way. So a good game overall for her. Goes to the free throw line to put them back up by 10. Rebound there by Ford. Back in the hands of Bowen. Nice cut, pass, and the finish. Four with a nice bucket. Well, that assist was made by Wagner. Coming right back though are the East All-Stars. They make it 30 to 40. Here comes the double, Owens gets rid of it. Takes a deep three. Just short. Nice look on the inside. Can't finish on the layup though. It's gonna be tapped out. Brock looking inside. Triggs looking to do the rest. Wills, deals. Big shoes to fill there on in the post. She gets another bucket, makes it 30 to 42. Nice drive there in the finish by Latoya Bond. If the East is able to come back and win this one, Latoya Bond will be a big reason why. She can get to the rack, put pressure on the defensive end. Very hard player to keep out of the paint. Tanya Bowens comes back and says, all we have to do is keep doing us. She does so there with that jumper. Here's Hurt. Hurt can't get the shot to go. Ford looking to push. Crosses over, puts it up with the left. No good on the first attempt. Ball tipped out to Bowens. Bowens pulls up. Money. Tanya Bowens able to pick up the pieces there on the loose ball. And make it 32 to 46. We'll have a foul there off the ball. Bond. Bond pulls up on Bowens. Shots off the mark. 
I think one of the reasons you need Bond to be aggressive is because she's so good at being able to get onto the inside. She can draw attention and be able to kick it to others or finish. But I think you also want to use her to try and tire Bowens out a little bit, make Bowens defend her uh, consistently and see if maybe it can affect how efficient she's been so far here in this game. Football pass ahead. And I have a foul on the play. It'll be the east ball there along the baseline. Bond wrestles away an offensive rebound and one. Can be her second one of the second half when she's able to hit the back end here. She makes it 34 to 46. So you got to give the East All-Stars credit. They've been able to make a run and really get back into this game. Uh, but you also got to give the West All-Stars credit as well because they've made sure that they've bend it but haven't gotten to the point of breaking just yet. And they work it inside. Here's Logan. Logan off the mark on the shot. Bowens comes up with the loose ball. Now working it back into Logan. Logan guarded by Hurt. Lumanu trying to pull it out of there. Bowens gets a hand on it, but Lumanu able to keep it. Pass ahead and the finish by Courtney Hurt. Hurt makes it 36 to 46. Five minutes, 34 seconds and counting. We're gonna have a have a defensive three seconds. I believe it's going to go against Courtney Hurt. Tanya Bowens will take the shot. Bowen splashes that one through. Makes it 36 to 47. Now Bowens gets the step. And one on the continuation. Tanya Bowens has been a savvy of a player on the court today. Uh, as we've had here in this game. Knows when to feed the post. Knows when to kick it to the wing. It has the ox. Brianna Brock and others involved, but also knowing when to pick her spots and score herself. Makes it a 14 game there. Have a foul off the ball and a couple substitutions for the West, including Azzy Ox, Kerry Washington, Shan Hardiman. No good on the first free throw. Second one is good for Lumanu. Mid range jumper bounces around and getting the roll there is as he knocks. She's earned it. Fifteen point game, under five minutes. Hard drive and a hard foul is going to send Meli Lumanu to the line.
Four minutes, 45 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. That free throw in and out. Got a jump ball. Jump ball, so we will jump it up. It'll be between Christina DeWitt and Michaela Hopkins. What's up, DeWitt? Tipped it towards Hurt. Hurt, and when unable to corral it in, so it will go back over to the West All-Stars. They lead by 15. Trying to feed it inside to Hopkins. Poked out to the corner. Hopkins trying to get it out of there. Risky pass, but the risk pays off. It looked like it did for a second, but the shot would not fall. Good hustle by everybody. DeWitt stretched out over the floor. Helped up by a teammate hustling for that ball. Four minutes, 19 seconds. 50-50 ball is important in every game. Definitely important in this one. If you're the West, important to try to stretch this lead out. If you're the East, important to either keep it where it's at now until you can close it or go ahead and cut it in half. Ford kicks it out to Hardiman. Hardiman, no good on the shot. Rebound corralled in by the West. Looks like we're going to have another jump ball. This time it'll be between Michaela Hopkins and Latoya Bond. Hopkins tip that one towards as he knocks in DeWitt. He's coming away with it. Layup. Could be the third and one of the half here for LaToya Bond. Talked about early on uh, in the first half and how a lot of those shots weren't falling for Bond, but how she just had to keep at it because you knew they'd start falling. Here you see her go to, to the cup with the left, eat the contact. Third and one of the second half for LaToya Bond. Bond spent some time in the WNBA. Member of the Southern Generals here in the WUBA. Currently trying to do whatever she can to get her team not only in this one, they're already in it, but in a closer striking distance. The West have been able to respond when they've needed to. Here we're going to have a trip to the free throw line for Shan Hardiman. 12-point game with 3.48 left to play. Third quarter action. Harden with no good on the first free throw. Misses both of them. Free throws will definitely be something to look at as this game continues. They can add up. DeWitt got the initial defender to go on the shot fake, but good help by the West. Someone stepped out of bounds, trying to look at the official to see if I can get a feel for exactly who. Ball back over to the west, so I'm assuming it was the east. They're trying to keep it in bounds. Tanya Bowens trying to look inside to Hopkins. Here comes the double. Hopkins back out to Bowens. Bowens can't get the three to go. Ball going to be saved there by Hardiman. And that one going to go out of bounds. A rare miscue there on the offensive end for the West All-Star. Here's Jordan. Add three-pointer off the mark. 
West coming away with it. Here's Ford. Nice job of stopping the ball there by Bond before it able to weave through traffic and finish. Great play there by Taylor Ford. You see the East trying to step up the defensive intensity. Ford still able to get the bucket to go. Have a foul there on that play. Scores 40 to 54. All right, we got a trip to the free throw line. Let's take a look at our Red Bull instant replay. You see Ford, she was cut off there by Bond. Gets around her, leaves hurt, goes up, switches it over to the left and finishes. Nice play there by Ford. Ford, a rookie of the year candidate here in the WUBA. Plays like that will help both through the resume. Plays for the GIE Lady Matrix. Second free throw, no good. Bump. Bowen gets it ahead. Ball gonna be poked out of there. Hurt. Gonna pass it ahead and the finish. Taken care of there by number five, Kendra Appling. Nice teamwork there by Hurt and Appling on the defensive end and also being able to convert that into offense. Forty-two to fifty-four. Hopkins knocks down the free throw. It's always a good sign as a coach when your post players can go to the free throw line and knock them down. They'll get a lot of free throw opportunities just by being active, rebounding, and running the floor. Hurt free throw in and out, one minute, 57 seconds. Left to play here in the third. That free throw in and out. Now here's Bowens. Bowens will bring it back out. I guess it over to Washington. Washington with the skip pass to Ford. Ball's tipped around. Hopkins wrestles it away. Washington trying to work against Jordan and loses it out of bounds. Jordan looking to hit. Hurt on the roll. Instead it's gonna be stolen away. Now here come the West All-Star. Pass inside to Hopkins. Hopkins foul before she can get up the shot attempt. Another trip to the line here for Hopkins. She knocked down her last two free throws with no problem. Short on that one. That one's long. But it's going to be tracked down there by the West. They'll get another opportunity. Bowens hesitates, then goes in, falls away with the jump shot. Strong rebound by Shan Hardiman. The helmet and lunch fail play on the inside makes it 42 to 58. They didn't get back on defense in time though, and Kendra Appling trying to get in and sneak a quick bucket. She'll have to earn it from the free throw line. 52.8 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. No good on the first free throw. So 
it's East Ball there along the baseline. They get it up top to Bond. Bond, she's got three and ones here in the second half. So now with some of these possessions, we're starting to see the the West, the West All-Stars with fatigue setting in just a little bit. Not collectively, but there you saw Washington unable to really move laterally there. Just reached out and fouled Jordan. With Jordan missing the first free throw. Splits the pair of free throws. It is 43 to 58. 36 seconds and counting remaining here in the third quarter. We'll see if the West All-Star shoots a hole for the last shot here. Bowens has it. She's guarded by Apple. Foul there along the sideline against DeWitt. DeWitt doesn't agree with the call. the easy button at the free throw line. 22.7 seconds on the clock. Third quarter. Lead back out to 16. The lowest this lead has gotten since early on has been nine points. And each time they've threatened to get it under that number, Bowens and the West All-Stars have responded. 43 to 60 after that free throw. They kick it out to the top of the key. Here's DeWitt. Can't get that three pointer to go. Ball is out of bounds there off of the west. Gary Washington trying to wrestle that one away. Lost it off of her arm out of bounds. DeWitt continues to be aggressive there. She goes from the three point line to the cup. That shot's up, and it will be just short. 45 to 60 is your score. We'll take a short break and be back with fourth quarter action here at the WUBA All-Star Game. bring a lifetime of memories. Join our family with a Dream Elite membership. Call or log on today. Your Atlanta dream. Live it. Time to get the fourth quarter going. The West All-Stars leading by a score of 15. As we get ready to start the last increment of time. It's a 15 point advantage now. It was cut to as low as nine points there in the third quarter. Well, the West All-Stars always did what they need keep the lead where it was at, and then grow it by a few points. One thing you'll want to note, number 12, Tanya Bowens uh, for the West All-Stars is on the bench right now. Bowens getting a breather. As we have a timeout, That kind of baffled everybody. I think it baffled the official that awarded it. I, I think it, it baffled the West All-Stars. There was some miscommunication there for the East, and I think Armelli Lumanu just called the timeout to avoid having a five-second violation. 
So it's pretty awkward to call a timeout right after halftime like that to inbound it, but it's better than having a five-second violation called and having it go the other way without you even getting a possession. Logan steals the ball. Now she's looking to lead the break. Ford back to Logan. Logan saves it inbounds. Gets it to Knox. Knox is doubled. And the East come away with it. Here's Lumanu with the lay-in. Lumanu, good job of bringing that ball back to protect it. Really wanted to read the defender and see whether she was going to defend the shot or defend the pass. Kept it back and realized she was able to really get the easy lay-in. Now we got another steal. Umanu sidesteps the defender and earns a trip to the line. Zero to 100. Real quick playing in the background. Real indicative of the uh, couple minutes we've seen out of uh, Armelli Lumanu since that quarter timeout. Showing good energy. Can't get that free throw to go. They're the East All-Stars. You know there have been at least about at least six or seven free throws that you've missed uh, here in this game. Oh, it can really be difference makers versus a double-digit deficit instead of a single-digit one. As Brianna Brock upset with herself there for not being able to complete the and one, but she will go to the line with a chance to get two. Can't get the first free throw. Splits the pair, makes the second one, makes it 47 to 61. No legal screen. Well, that gives the ball back to the West. There's Ford. The jump stop and the bucket there. Sharita Triggs. Nice move there by Triggs. Makes it 47 to 63. Offensive rebound, working hard to cash in on it. DeWitt can't get that shot to go there along the baseline. Good defense to strip it away. Yumanu with the save. West All-Stars coming in with the block. Lamanu, nice cut, and the finish. Solid fourth quarter so far here for Armelli Lumanu. She makes it a 14-point game, but Bowens is back in the game, pushes ahead. Easy button bucket on the inside with the pass to Triggs. Bowen's one of those point guards. And we interrupt that previously scheduled message, that three-pointer knocked down there by number 21, Alicia Harson. But Tanya Bowen's one of those point guards where if you have a certain cushion, i.e. a 13 to 15 point lead, you gotta feel like you've got enough to bring that game home. You're gonna make sure the team doesn't get too out of control, stays aggressive, uh, but also makes smart plays. Triggs forced that one a little bit though, but Brianna Brock with the offensive rebound. She's denied. Christina DeWitt working very hard there on the inside. DeWitt, the, the Southern General, returning from Europe. WUBA Finals MVP last year. Catch and shoot three off the mark. They get a second chance opportunity there on the tip out.
Looks like we got a defensive three seconds. I believe that's the call, not really sure. Must have just been an official timeout. Yeah, just an official timeout. Nice little ball movement there. A little bit of a give and go there by Lamanu. All rebounds gonna be tipped to Bowen. Six minutes, 47 seconds left to play in this one. DeWitt calling for it inside, so they go to the top of the key. Now they'll get it to DeWitt. This is the first one. Strong rebound there by Brittany Logan. Gets it to Bowens. Bowens behind the back. Nice defense there to get a piece of it. Now DeWitt gonna pass it ahead. Pass a little bit too far for Courtney Hurt. Bowens hangs in the air, drops it off. They kick it back out, maybe a little too unselfish there when they had a wide open layup coming. DeWitt gets the rebound. Back-to-back -back turnovers there for the East. They're playing hard, trying to claw their way close enough to close this gap of 13 points. Knox gets it to Logan. Logan misses. Washington can't get the putback attempt to go. Manu kicks it out. DeWitt going to try a three-pointer. That one's off. I have a trip to the free throw line. First free throw is good. Now 12. Can we cut to 11 here with this hurt free throw? And it, it is. Five minutes, 35 seconds remaining here in the game. Substitution coming in for hurt is going to be number four, Akila Watkins. Bowens uses the shot fake. Got a good look, can't get it to go. Hardeman inbounded, but it's stolen by Lumanu. And Lumanu's foul. Send our Melly Lomano to the line. She's been a spark plug for the East All-Star since the fourth quarter started. Cuts the lead to 10 there. Lamanu misses the second free throw. That shot off the mark by Bond. Nice rebound inside by Akilah Watkins. Persistence pays off there for her on the offensive glass. She makes it 57 to 65. Hopkins gonna be called for an illegal screen.
Just looked like a pretty good screen. On my end, but the ref had a better angle and he has the authority to make that call so the ball goes the other way to the east. It's an eight point game. Lamanu taking advantage of those two steps. No correction, that is not Lamanu, that's number 21. That's Alicia Harson with a big bucket. She makes it 59 to 65 here with four minutes, 38 seconds left to play. Let's take a look at that last play. Did a great job of really maximizing those two steps. You see her here, one, two, really made a very long stride there on that second step. Nifty footwork there to make it 59 to 65. And we have a timeout coming here. Four minutes, 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter. We'll take a short break. When we get back, we'll bring you the final four minutes or so of the WBA All-Star Game. Out of the timeout. West All-Stars have the ball and they have the lead. East All-Stars trying their best to change that. Ford gets the step and Ford will go to the line. Taylor Ford, the GIE Lady Matrix member, heads to the charity strike. Good on the first free throw. Four minutes, 24 seconds left. Free throws key for both teams. Second one bounces around and will fall. To make it 59 to 66. DeWitt keeping that pivot foot. Kicks it across court. Three pointer, no good. DeWitt fighting for the rebound. Bond comes out with it, kicks it to DeWitt. The East battling hard to try and get a bucket here. They realize how key every position is. And DeWitt muscles that one in. The Tar Heel makes it a five point game. Here's Ford. Ford has that shot blocked. I believe it was Lumanu that got a piece of that. Ball's tipped out and around. Bowens comes up with it and nails the baby jumper. Makes it a seven point game. Strong take there by Akilah Watkins. Watkins has a chance to cut the lead back down to five with three minutes, 14 seconds on the clock. Good on the first. East managed to keep possession. That shot off the mark by Bond. East coaching staff arguing that the ball was tipped. But to no avail. Still a six point game here with three minutes and 10 seconds left to play. Bowens breaking the defense down. Ball 
Oh, last touch by the West All-Stars. Manu will inbound it to Bond. Bond feels like it's go time. That shot's no good. Rebound brought out of there by Sharita Triggs. Manu trying to step up the pressure. Of course, a turnover there. Instead, she'll pick up the foul. Two minutes, 38 seconds on the clock. They get it into Ford. Ford tries on the reverse, has it smacked away, but is able to pick it up. Triggs wants it on the inside. Now they get it to her. Bowens hangs in the air. Got caught in no man's land. Nice defense by the East. Coming the other way quickly. They drop it off. But Bowens right there to come back and get the steal. She'll pull up. Bait them into the pull up. And then she drops it off for Logan. Logan has that shot rolled around. Won't fall down for her. But she can go get two from the line. Bowens, Tanya Bowens having a great game so far, member of the Gym City Slam. NAIA all-time leading scorer. Playing like it here today, but on top of what she can do, scoring the ball. Very impressive by how she can run a team. Make sure all, make sure all parts of the machine are well-oiled. Even though this six-point cushion isn't as much as I'm sure she would like as uh, the, the floor general out there, she plans on making sure they come home with the victory regardless. Seven-point game, two minutes, seven seconds, and counting. Bond with the quick take. Ball gonna be poked away. One minute, 54 seconds left. Five point game after that Latoya Bond bucket. Now here's Bond. Bond trying to get it inside. Hurt kicks it out now. Three-pointer, no good. DeWitt with the long rebound. DeWitt, cross-court pass over to Harson. Harson has that shot blocked. She knocks out a couple push-ups and hops back up. Here's DeWitt. Sit to hurt. Hurt with a Paul Pierce-like jumper there, working from the elbow. Came off a little awkward, but it's good to go. Making it 69 to 66, and we're gonna have a timeout. What a game we've got coming here into the final minute and 30 or so. Big bucket knocked down there by Courtney Hurt. Minute 27, left to play. We'll keep it right here. You can see the East huddle. There, they've had to fight an uphill battle for the majority of this game. Very solid play from the West All-Stars, spearheaded by the efforts of Tanya Bowens. Talked about how good of a job Bowens had done up to this point, and if you were Coach Barnes, how you gotta feel good with the 12, 13, 15 point cushion with her being able to bring the game home based off of that scenario. But the East have scoffed at that notion. They refuse to go away, have continued to fight and have been able to score at a higher clip to make it a three point game with one minute and 27 seconds left to play here in this one. Turnover. A rare turnover there by Bowens. Gives it right back to the East All-Star. 
three-point game. Just one second is going off the clock. One minute, 26 seconds remaining in the game. Oh, nice pass and the finish. The dime dropped there by Bond. The finish, I believe that was Courtney Hurt. Bowens in need of a lifeline, nowhere to go. Now she gets it to Logan. They need to get it across the timeline. They finally do. Things help the Skelter on the offensive end. Ford is fouled on the plate. When you talk about needing a bucket, what a play, good vision, and good execution to get one there on that last play. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, Bond, she's done a great job scoring the ball. There she's going to let Hurt set the screen. Hurt rolls, threads the needle on the pass, and Hurt does what you have to do for a good play to be as good as it can be, and that's scoring. First free throw was missed on the other end by Ford. So it's still a one-point game with one minute and five seconds left to play. We've got a turnover and then a timeout. Looks like the East had turned the ball over. And then the West got a quick timeout. One minute, two seconds left to play here in this one. This has been a fun game to watch, but I don't think it's been as fun unless you really joined us from the very start. And you saw the momentum that the West All-Stars had in the first half and really for the majority of this game. There's been times where the East All-Stars could have succumbed to the pressure, to the deficit. Hot summer day here in Atlanta. It's easy to start thinking about after the game and Warriors-Cavs coming on a little bit later. But the East All-Stars have stayed true to the mission. And it is now a one possession game with one minute and two seconds left to play. Triggs to inbound, looking for Ford. Gets it in. Now, there's some confusion. Not sure why the official stopped ball, especially when no call was made. But we'll get back to the action. 58 seconds left to play. Here comes the double. And that one will be called a foul. I believe it's going to go against Latoya Bond. So the East All-Stars opted not to try and defend and maybe force a turnover and let them run seconds off of the clock. They go for the foul quickly to try and extend the game and make sure they get an ample amount of possessions to try and tie this thing up. They may want to put a, a different suspect at the free throw line. As Bowens has been pretty automatic from there here so far today. Romano kicks it over to DeWitt. DeWitt for three. Rattles it in. Makes it a one point ball game. It would not be where they are now if not for the hustle plays, but also the ability to get some buckets. Uh, shown by Christina DeWitt. But it's Bowens at the free throw line. Gets that one to go. Good on the second as well. Still a one possession game. It's now a three point advantage for the West All-Stars. Bond trying to score quickly. Loses the ball temporarily, but now they pick it back up. That three-pointer is off the mark. As Bowens is fouled again.
First free throw is good. So is the second. It's now a five point game. That three point is no good. Rebound. Going to be brought down by Sharita Triggs, and it'll be Triggs going to the free throw line. Like the West All Stars will leave everybody back on the defensive end. Make sure there are no quick buckets on the other end. Trace keeps that stroke the same way on the second one as the first. No need for any rebounders anyway. Can't get that one to go. Splits the pair. Witt hands it off. Arson three pointer too strong. Bowens, a fitting ending to how the game is going. Bowens ends up dribbling it out with the ball in her hands. Appreciate you joining us here for the, U the WUBA All Star game. It is a 77 to 71 victory for the West All Stars. It's been a great game. Appreciate you joining us here. Stay tuned for some post-game interviews. Welcome back here to the WUBA All-Star Game. We're here courtside with the player of the game, Tanya Bowens, as well as the winning coach, Coach Jermaine Barnes. Coach JB, before we get into the performance by Tanya, your thoughts overall from the coach's perspective on what she was able to do for your team here today? Um, without Tanya tonight, we won to one. You know, um, her ability to score the basketball, put pressure on the defense, the way she pushed the ball in the first half gave us our 15-point lead. I thought she was well deserving of the award. It's, it's, it's everything is about transitioning and uh, adjusting in the game of basketball, and she adjusts. She makes mistakes, but she doesn't quit. She doesn't die. She comes back and makes big plays and helps us win this game. Summarize your thoughts as a coach when you see that 15-point lead being brought down a little bit and maybe not the biggest cushion that you wanted, but having a player like her on the floor. I blame Tanya because if it wasn't for Tanya, we wouldn't have been up by 15. And if it wasn't for Tanya, the game wouldn't have been within three. So she pushed it back up to six. You know, she definitely was the driving force in us winning this basketball game. You know, and I put pressure on her all the time, and I'm going to continue to do so. Now, Tanya, you hear your coach's perspective. Obviously, you're the coach out there on the floor for your squad. Talk about your emotions through the game as far as when you guys got up to that point where you saw the lead slipping a little bit and wanting to make sure you did, you made sure you bend it but didn't break. When we were up, I was just hoping we continued to focus and didn't let them come back in the range. But when we started to slip, we had to regain focus. It was all about us being in control. We were up. We just had to control the ball and play at our speed and not theirs. Now, you really got off to a great start. How much of it did you want to come out and really make sure you set the tone yourself, but also make sure you got others involved, whether it was a Triggs or a Knox, whatever the case may be? Well, I like to look before I shoot, but I also like to push and make them play the tempo to our game. So I like to carry the speed and start the speed. Obviously, you're an NAIA all-time leading scorer. You know, you've played at different levels in different countries. Talk about the WUBA. And, and how this game fits as far as some of the best places you play. Well, JB continues to push me as a player. He gives me advice. He tells me things to encourage me, not break me down. I always go to him for advice when I need something. So far, he's just helped me from last year to now do a 180, basically. Hey, well, great game, great season. Appreciate you guys joining us, Court Cyber. Signing off here from the WUBA All-Star Game. Player of the game, Tanya Bowens. Marcus Burnett, thanks for joining us back here courtside at the WUBA All-Star Game. I'm here with Jermaine Barnes as well as Coach Jared Johnson, uh, two coaches for the East and West teams, uh, All-Stars respectively, but also 
two head coaches for two teams that will definitely shape the playoffs as we go into the WUBA stretch. Jermaine Barnes coaching the GIE Lady Matrix, also the coach of the Southern Generals. Now, you guys obviously went at it today. Uh, for the sake of the league, it was fun, but now business kicks it up to another level. Your thoughts as the playoffs approach? Well, I mean, anytime I'm dealing with Jared, it's always fun. It's always competitive. Um, we have the same mutual respect for each other. He already knows I'm going to go into it ready to beat him. I already know he's looking to cut my throat off. So it's always a positive to have that in the league. Two different organizations, competitive like that, makes the brand better. You know, so um, the All-Star game was awesome. I felt like his strategy was on point. In the fourth quarter, they did everything they were supposed to do. They caused Bowens to make some mistakes. They had us right where they wanted us, but they turned it over at the end, and that made the situation a little difficult. But I anticipate the same exact thing from the generals, I mean, in the, in the championship, because I expect us to be there. Now, Coach, that seemed like a playoff-type atmosphere in terms of kind of being thrown a, a flurry of punches early on, having to withstand and then make a push to get back into that game. Uh, what were your thoughts on the overall contest? Uh, well, I, I actually, first of all, let me just say it was a great game. Yeah. Uh, great for the league, great excitement, great fun. Uh, uh, Jermaine was on point when he said that um, I, I come to cut throats. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes I also come to bleed a little bit. In the first half, we bled a lot. Uh, but, you know, uh, I watched what was going on out on the floor and we made a few adjustments and we came back strong in the second. That's exactly how the playoffs are going to be. Yeah. Our playoffs are, uh, are going to be sort of exactly a very similar uh, scenario where you, a run is not going to make you safe. Okay? You got to play 40 minutes to win out here and the last shot often determines the game. Uh, we were in a very good situation, 72-71 right where we want to be, as he said, and we turned the ball over. Uh, that pretty much was it in terms of, you know, the, the mistake that cost us. Uh, we just couldn't recover from that one mistake. At, you know, we, late in the game, with no time left, uh, you know. But um, the Matrix uh, uh, have been a much improved team this year with him coaching. And uh, we actually, you know, Matrix made the finals last year, but they actually weren't quite as strong as they are this year. So we anticipate a little bit more of a battle in the playoffs. Uh, both the first round matchups, you know, have played close games all season. So we expect to see a lot of excitement. Now, Coach, obviously I, I don't expect you guys to, uh, I won't do like the media did Steve Kerr and ask you to outline your strategy here, but what do you think are going to be some of the key points in terms of your team and being able to hoist a championship? Energy. Uh, when we maintain our energy, we have a high degree of proficiency in terms of results. Uh, when we don't play with energy, uh, when we play a team like his team, we have problems because they're an energy team. That's, that's the key. Now, Coach, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say energy is going to be one of your focal points for the GIE Lady Matrix, but, you know, give us a, a synopsis of what do you think are going to be some pressure points in being able to make that run. We're right where we want to be. We want the disciples in the first round. If I had Jared in the first round, I wouldn't be very happy. Um, I want Jared at the end, and I made that very clear. I, I have no fear of any team we face early on. I want him at the end because he's the best. They're defending champions. You have to respect that. But at the same time, GIE is coming to win the championship. Uh, we play an old-school Detroit Pistons smash mouth basketball. The people get it confused like the generals aren't physical. They are a very physical ball club, and they have the best player we have to offer in the entire league in LaToya. I mean, so we know what we have to face, and we know what we have to bring. We're not going to change who we are. We're going to come out. We're going to be physical. We're going to try to dominate the glass, and we're going to try to rattle them and get them out of their game, and hopefully we come out on top. I respect what they do, but at the same time, GIE is going to play the way GIE plays. I tell you what, with this game, with the upcoming playoff push, and with these two coaches, the theme is iron sharpens iron. This is Renette signing off with Coach Jared Johnson and Coach J.B. Barnes here from the WUBA. Marcus Burnett, back here courtside at the WUBA All-Star Game. I'm here with Coach Jermaine Barnes, head coach of the West All-Stars, as well as Sharita Triggs, a key cog to the will of the All-Stars here today. Also, as the WUBA playoffs approach, a member of GIE Lady Matrix. Coach, going into the playoff stretch, what are your thoughts being able to have the services of a Triggs and your squad going into the stretch? 
Well, I really can't say enough about Sharita Triggs. I mean, Sharita Triggs is by far my best player. She's been my best player alongside Patricia Hartman. Um, those are my key focal points. Patricia's out with injuries. Everything is about Triggs. I go into Triggs, she's my Tim Duncan. I do not shy away from that. Everybody on the floor knows that. She's well-respected, four-time All-Star, four-time All-League, four years in Europe with honors. It, it deserves respect, and I hold a high, a high level of standard for her. I don't brown those for her. I won't allow her to be lazy. I need her. And in order for us to win a championship, I'm going to need her to carry us. So, Sharita, obviously your reputation precedes you. Uh, you got a great basketball resume. How much of the WUBA, this All-Star game, and the league as a whole helps you not only showcase your talent up to this point, but also be able to be a proving ground against other players? Um, well, just being about around basketball is always awesome. You know, like I said, being overseas, it gives you experience, whether it's mentally or physically. It always gives you experience. So to be able to come out here in the All-Star game, have fun, and to play with these girls, you know, going up and down the floor, that's, a, that's all I can ask for. Obviously, your coach has championship expectations for your squad. Uh, you spearheading those efforts. What's your outlook as the playoffs approach? Well, I'm looking to get our championship. That's what I'm looking forward to. You know, our team has worked hard this um, this whole year to get to this point. So we're coming for the generals, and we want to come out with that W when we play them for the championship. Obviously, you guys have great chemistry, great energy with your players there on the court. Talk about JB as a coach and that extension, uh, you know, as far as you guys' dynamic on the floor. JB is an awesome guy. He's like my brother. You know, I've known him for years, so to be under him is, is just another awesome experience to have in, within my basketball resume. Um, going into it, like I said before, on the court, we're brother and sister. Off, on the court, he's my coach. I'm the player. Off the court, we're brother and sister. So that relationship just makes it stronger for me to go out there and play comfortably and just play my game. A lot of times you hear the comparison between European basketball and basketball over here in the States, what's there, what's not. Your thoughts on being able to come to a league here where you get physical play, you get talented players, you get all of those doses of good basketball. What's your thought on that, Donna? Um, I feel like this league has grown each and every year, and I feel like if we keep competing and keeping up the level that we have, more players will hear and more players will know about the WBA. And if they can't make it overseas at first, then they'll come here, get their jump start to get overseas. So I feel like it's a great opportunity for um, younger girls and for people like me who's already played overseas and want to keep continuing to play. Summing up the WNBA, West All-Stars take advantage of the opportunity for an All-Star win today. Be sure to uh, stay tuned to the playoffs, which promises to be a pretty interesting finish if the GIE Lady Matrix and uh, Coach Barnes and uh, uh, dang. He been, he and Sharita Triz can say anything about I, I, I'll edit that one out. I'll edit that one out. Okay. Okay. Be sure to stay tuned as this WUBA finish promises to be a very exciting one if the GIE Lady Matrix and Sharita Triggs have anything to say about it. Signing off here from the WUBA All-Star Game.